There is one concept the Chip Kelly led Oregon Ducks relied on more than anything else and with it they were able to take a blowtorch to college football and create one of the most explosive offenses of all time. And that concept is the inside zone with a read option off of it with a bubble screen to the outside. This three read RPO really exemplified everything that made this offense special and the whole rest of the offense was based on how effective this was for them. Now what made this such a crucial concept for the Ducks and how can we employ it in Madden 22? Well this whole play is designed around spreading the defense out, forcing them to declare their intentions and really just putting them in a no-win scenario. And what this really means is no matter what the defense does, one of our options is going to be open and if not we are going to create one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside that we can exploit. By adding the QB as a run option and the bubble to the outside, we are flipping the numbers advantage in the favor of the offense and forcing the defense to account for every player on the field. Now this is all going to work great guys because the concept you learn in this video you can apply in any scheme, any offense you are running. Now a ton of playbooks in Madden have some sort of read option in them. Most playbooks are going to have some sort of bubble screen that you can work in and then every playbook in the game has an inside zone run. It is probably the most popular run in the entire game and I'm going to show you exactly how all all three of these options work and when you should be going to. Now for this Oregon spread offense, we are going to be in the spread play and we are going to be running out of the formation doubles Y flex offset and the play we are going to be going over today is RPO read double screen. Now I'm going to be releasing a ton in this scheme to really show you how you can run one of the most fun unique offenses in Madden 22. But if you really want to bring this scheme to the next level and learn everything we are going to be bringing to the table in this offense you need to check out my membership page now i've already released a pistol offense out of this oregon scheme and i'm going to be releasing a ton more on that page to really just make this offense crazy explosive so if you guys are interested in checking that out i will leave a link to the membership page down in the description below okay so before we get into this main play in this scheme i want to break down exactly how an inside zone runs you can really take this information information you learn here and apply it to any offense in the game then I'm going to show you how and why we are running the read option in tandem with inside zone then I will go over the bubble screen when we get into the actual play okay inside zone I really quickly want to touch on a zone blocking scheme so basically what a zone blocking scheme is guys, really layman's terms. Every offensive lineman on the field is gonna be working down the field laterally to the side of the run and they're not gonna have a specific man that they are blocking. They're gonna be blocking an individual zone and it's gonna be a series of double team blocks depending on the defensive alignment. Double team blocks, once that block is secured, they will get to the next level. So that is really a basic version of what a zone blocking scheme is is so when we are reading a zone blocking scheme it works similarly there is no defined hole that we are going to we are going to be reading the defenders and then reacting to what they do and picking the hole that opens up so as a running back our aim point is always going to be at the play side guards butt. we are going to aim right at that spot and then we are going to have three options we are going to either bang it bend it or bounce it. That is going to be very similar verbiage to the wide zone offense that I just released. You guys, if you know, if you watch that offense, you're going to pick up on those terms, but we're going to be reading this a little bit different than an outside zone because obviously this is an inside zone. So our three options are bang it and bang it is really our ideal scenario. That is going to be the play side a gap right here. That is going to be ideal that if everything works out, we want to be able to bang it up this play side a gap then if that a gap gets crashed if it gets bundled up and we can't hit that then we want to be able to bend it to the back side a gap now if both a gaps get collapsed the whole middle of the field is really bundled up that is when we want to bounce it to the outside so then we want to bounce it to the b gap or even the outside c gap so those are really our reads we're going to aim at the guard we're going to either 
bang it up the A gap, bend it back the opposite A gap, or bounce it outside. Okay, so let's take a look at this play, guys, with our running back. Now, like I said, you can apply this to any time you're running inside zone. It doesn't have to be read option. It doesn't have to be anything like that. So this is our A gap right here if we are going to bang it. Now, this gap can move down the line of scrimmage, so keep that in mind. It's not a stationary gap. It's going to be, be between the center and the guard. So right here, we look, this gap is still open. So the guard is able to take this defensive lineman, totally wash him out of the play. We do get a decent double team block on this D tackle just long enough to hold him up. And now we are able to bang this run up right up the A gap for a really nice, you know, 13 to 14 yard run. Okay, now our second option, first one, we banged it. Now, if that gets taken away, so right here, we look at this A gap, guys, and it just really gets closed off to us. There is nothing there. So now we look, we can bend this back. So this defensive lineman pushes our center, pushes our guard into that gap, closes it up. But by doing that, he is gonna open up that backside A gap for us to able to cut it back, hit it up, and we're able to pick up eight yards on the play. Okay, now we're, we have one more I wanna show you. It's gonna be bounce it, but on this one, I really wanna take a look at this outside defender and I want to quickly touch on the read option. So this is just how we read a normal inside zone no matter what scheme, what offense we are in. But the reason why we call a read option with our inside zone is now this defensive end has to be responsible for the quarterback. So that just gives us a numbers advantage. Now our offensive linemen don't have to worry about this outside player. That is why we are running read option guys. That is why you need to incorporate read option even if you never keep the ball. Chip Kelly really didn't care if he had the most explosive athlete at quarterback. All he cared about is that this quarterback could get him six, seven yards if this defender crashes down. That forces the defense to account for the quarterback. That is all we're trying to accomplish with this read off. So now watch this one. Watch the end. He bounces out, he stops. So he is accounting for the quarterback. So that is just one less player for our offensive lineman to have to worry about. So now we look at this play. Here's our A gap here gets closed down. So we can't bang it. Then we look at the backside A gap and we get this player in the gap right away. So we can't bend it. So now we are gonna bounce this run to the outside. We accidentally get caught up on our offensive lineman a little bit there, but we're able to bounce that out for a really nice gainer. So those are the three options, guys. We looked at what happens if, you know, their read option defense is on concern they're gonna take away the quarterback. But now we're gonna call this play. What if they're playing aggressive? What if they're trying to stop the run and they're not accounting for the quarterback? That is when we have to make them pay. So watch the player here, guys. He crashes down. So we even look, like we have pretty good blocking here, but this backside player is gonna crash down on this player. So even though we block it up well on the front side, if we hand the ball here, they have a fast athletic D end. He's just gonna track our running back down. So now we escape out the back door and we fire up field, put a spin move and we're able to gain 20 yards. So that is really why we are using inside zone with the read option in it. Guys, now we're gonna get into our main play for this offense. This is honestly one of my favorite plays in this whole playbook. It is so tough to stop and it is gonna set so much up for the rest of our offense. And I will be referencing this video in later videos in this Oregon scheme, guys. We'll be doing similar stuff out of other formations. So a lot of this stuff you can take it and apply to other offenses, other formations. But right here, I want to go over exactly what we are going to do when we see different alignments. So I'm going to refer to this alignment here, guys, as a light box. If we ever see a light box, so what I mean by that is both safeties are back and there is four players outside over top of each one of our receivers. So now we look on, in, on the inside guys and they have five players and we have five blockers plus our quarterback. And what did we say about our quarterback guys when we are playing it, this as a read option, now this defender has to account for our quarterback. So now we have five blockers to block four players. That is the key with this play, guys. That is the key when this with this offense. If we ever get both safeties back and four players outside over top of our receivers, we have to run the ball here. 
This is gonna set up everything in this offense. It doesn't matter if it's the read option or the inside zone one up the middle, we have to make them pay if they are sitting in this covered shell. We are, our goal here is to run the football up the middle with the inside zone. And if they give us the quarterback read option, we have to make them pay. So if we see this look guys, this is ideal. We are gonna run the ball down their throat with our numbers advantage on the inside. Okay, now we're gonna look at our next look guys. And this is when they start to close the box a little. They still have both safeties back. They have a DB out here on our receiver. They have another DB on the receiver. They have another DB on the receiver. But now we look at our bubble screen player and there is nobody out here. So they brought this player in or this player in they walked them down into the box. So now we have a numbers advantage on the outside. We have two on one on the outside. We have to make them pick. So now they bring an extra player in the box. They even up the numbers there, but they are leaving the outside wide open. So if we ever see, you know, multiple players back and our slot receiver is uncovered, we want to throw this bubble screen. Now, if the user is playing on this corner, or they do something weird out there, fine. But 90% of the time, I'm gonna throw this bubble screen, force them to walk this defender out and play over top of this player. I'm gonna force them to have four players standing out on top of my receivers when I run this play, when I am in these sets. Okay, now the third look we can get, guys, is we can get a single high look. So now they have a single high safety they have players outside on each one of our players. So now we have a much more even look in the box. They are gonna have six defenders in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are gonna have five blockers up front plus our quarterback that they have to account for. So now the numbers are even. So now we can still call our read option run here. We can still run on this look. It's not quite as ideal, but what we can also do is we can audible to our cover three or cover one, you know, single high beaters, which I'll be bringing up in another video. But this is where, this is what they're gonna do when we start killing them with our read option run and our bubbles to the outside. They have to adjust at that point. They can't play two safeties back and four players on the outside, we will gash them over and over. So now they have to bring a player in the box. Now they're announcing what they're gonna do, guys. They have two options, basically, they can be running on this play, They or three. They can be running a zero blitz. If this guy comes in the box, they're bringing a blitz. They can be running cover one man where they're locked up with a middle deep safety, or they can be running cover three zone. They have three options they can be running. They are really telling us exactly what they are gonna do. So now we can audible to cover three beaters, we can audible to cover one beaters, or we can still run our read option run. Okay guys, now our last look we are gonna see, this is really what you will start to see a ton, is now they're gonna be in a zero blitz. Their, their options are done, they, they can't stop this play. I've really, literally run games where I run this play 80% of the game. It is that hard to stop when you really realize what you are trying to accomplish. So right here we look, they have four players outside. Everyone is locked up on the outside and now they are gonna be bringing a zero blitz. So there is gonna be nobody deep. This is gonna be one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside everywhere. So now right here, we do not wanna run our read option play. We are gonna audible to our man beaters. Those are things I'm gonna be going on in a later video, but this is where have your man beaters in our audibles and we are just gonna to go to that. They are declaring, this is a zero blitz. Uh, I'd say about 95% of the time, they could be doing some weird disguise where it's cover three or something and they're dropping players out. But even then it is still one-on-ones across the board. Now we have one-on-ones with our athletes on the outside. We are gonna have a ton of options to just destroy. So these are the alignments that you guys have to be aware of. These are gonna be all the different options we can go to to absolutely make people pay. Okay, enough talk. Let's get into some game footage. I'm gonna show you this play in action and how tough it is to stop. Okay, so we hop in guys right here and what do we see? We have four players outside and we have two safeties back. What are we doing when we see this? Look, we are running our read option play. That is it. So right here, we are gonna read this outside player. If he drops out like that, we are handing the ball off. Now we have five blockers for four defenders. Do we like our odds there? We are gonna hand this ball every single time and we are gonna absolutely gash people. Look at that, really nice run for a 10 yard game. With this inside zone guys, especially they have two safeties back, these safeties are gonna come up and fill. We do not need to bust 30, 40 yard gains. 
we are trying to get six, seven, eight yards, force them into other looks, and now it just opens up the rest of our playbook. Okay, here it is again, guys. Now, this one, two safeties back. We see this player here. He isn't really on the outside. He's kind of in between there. We definitely can go to this outside player when we see this look. I'm gonna show you guys that later. But right here, really, we like our numbers look in the box here as well. This player is bouncing out. Now we have a really nice numbers look. So we have this player running out, safeties and linebackers dropping back. And what I believe happened here, guys, is they pass committed. What you'll see a ton is people will pass commit to try to stop our bubble screens. Then we're gonna get basically automatic pancake blocks on the back on the inside and their linebacker safeties are dropping back. And now we are just once again gonna be able to get huge yards with our inside zone run. All right, guys, so now we get a bit different of a look than I went over. So we still have four players on the outside, but this is more of a cover four look. They bring their safeties in the box. But I had noticed this guy is keeping this read option player, you know, on aggressive. He's not on conservative. So now if we see that, even if they're loading the box on us, now we can still run our read option. If this guy's committing to the running back, if you notice that, Call this play, it does not matter. We see their user shoot the gap. We see this player come in on the running back and look at our tight end absolutely gets out and is a great lead blocker on this play. We had a sick pancake there and we were able to score a 35 yard touchdown because they're not on conservative. Okay guys, so same thing. We see two safeties back. We see four players out on all our receivers. So we are thinking inside zone, read option out of it. So read this outside player. He crashes down. We are gonna keep this and get to the outside. We have lead blockers out in front. Once again, our tight end gets a nasty pancake block. We spin back inside, juke out. We gain, you know, 15, 16 yards on the play. Okay, this is what I was talking about with this single high look. And now I wanna talk about bubble screens, guys. We haven't really touched on that a ton so far in the video, but it is a super important aspect of this, you know, scheme of this whole concept. So bubble screens, we are forcing them to account for our outside players. They're not just blockers. If you don't account for these players, they are gonna make you play, pay on the outside. And we are gonna throw to these players for two reasons. If they are uncovered, or if a player is covering them like here, but we notice they are shooting down in the run. We can just get it out to our bubble screen right away. So on this play, watch this player here. Watch how he shoots down and fires down to play the run. Now it is a two on one on the outside. Get it out to our bubble screen, our receiver. I wish our receiver would have just went up and blocked this guy, but that is fine. Now it's a one on one outside in space. We make one guy miss, break another tackle, get up field. And then the second time we are gonna throw the bubble screen, like I said, is if our player is uncovered. But here's a little trick on how we can, you know, manufacture this bubble screen player to get uncovered. We see a nickel coverage and we see their nickel back lines up over our slot receiver. But if we flip the play, so I'm gonna come out, flip the play. If they don't flip their defense, this nickel back is gonna stay on this side of the field. Now we are gonna have a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. So that is just a little trick, guys, to manipulate coverage. Now we have our bubble screen going to the field. Look at the user here. He doesn't even know what to do. He knows, okay, this could be an inside zone run, but he sees our bubble is uncovered. He sees the play action fake that holds him in the middle of the field. Now we fire out the bubble screen, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, make a guy miss, make another guy miss, one more guy miss, and we get down to the six yard line. Okay guys, and then the last option that really helps make this play even more unique is we have a bubble to this side, but we also have this wide receiver screen. So now they have to have a player out here as well. If this player was just out blocking, they could suck this player down and we couldn't make them play, pay on the outside. And if we look at this, tight end guys he is blocking out he's not blocking the player in front of him so if he's uncovered we don't even have to worry about it so now once again we are forcing them we see this is the read player he is not going to get out here so now right on the snap guys we can just look fire it out to this player tight end gets up field gets a block don't know what the receiver is doing or the corner safety is doing there make a guy miss get up field and we get a huge gain so they have to account for everybody on the field in this play now this concept is going to make our offense incredibly tough to stop but if you want to learn exactly what makes this oregon offense so special and the personnel we are going to use in this scheme you need to watch this video right here